Okay, needless to say, um, break building is probably the most important asset to have, um, certainly as a top player, and even, even in your club, if you can make 20, 30 breaks, obviously you're gonna win the, the, the large majority of the frames you play. Break building was always my strength, and uh, this video is all about how some of the shots you play and how you go about break building and trying to clear up and win the frame. Okay, the, one of the most important things about break building is sometimes, say you're in this situation, you come to the table, it's about recognising and sort of reading the table. You know, when I came to the table, I'd always think, well, how can I win the frame in one visit? We've got this, there's only three loose reds here. Okay, let's pretend we've been, your opponent's played a bad safety shot. You've left this red into the corner. Now, already when I come to the table, I'm thinking, how can I win the frame right here and now? The most important thing is when I'm going to go into the pack. That's what I'm thinking about when I come to the table. When am I going to get these reds into the open to try and win the frame at one visit? So it's always best to do it when you've got one red in the open. So right away, I'm, I'm obviously going to pot this red. Then depending on the angle I get in the black will be determined whether I play for this red or this red. But right away, I can see this red's a good chance to open the reds. So already I'm planning two or three shots ahead. So when I put the red, black, if I get an angle on this red, I can bring more reds into play. So we've been left this red. So now we're on the black. As I say, you're thinking shots ahead here. So right away, now I know that the angle I've got in the black, I've got to play for this red now. So now I've got this angle on the red, so, and this is about, about break building, about recognising times where you can play a more aggressive shot. We've got an angle in this red where we could quite easily just drop it in and play for the black into this corner, but if we want to be more aggressive, we want to bring reds into play, we pot this red and screw into the pack, and that's a chance to bring more reds into play. So we've played the screw shot, we're on the black, and now we've got another red. Without playing for the open one, we've got another red that we've brought out. So that's the art of break building, is recognising times where you can be more aggressive, bring reds into play and continue the break. Moving on um, from deciding what is the best red to play when you want to continue a break, we've got a little instance here where the obvious red is the straight one to pot in the corner pocket, leave yourself on the black. But we've got an option of this red, slightly more difficult pot, but again, can bring reds into play. So again, we, we, you've got to think about, you know, what's the best way of, can, can I win the frame in one visit? That's what I used to think. So any opportunity that, that you can find to sort of bring reds into play, I think, is, I think it's very important. I think it's the secret of break building. So I would play this one. Still playing for the black. But as you see, I'm still in the black, but I brought this red into play. I've got a red here, I've got reds here, so again, shot choice in break building is just so important. Obviously one of the most important shots in break building is when you have to open the, the bunch of reds uh, to keep the break going. Now this is a shot that different players play it different ways, certainly club players, and, and we would pot this black and play as low as possible into the cue ball, screw into the pack. Now it's not necessarily a bad shot. Um, because in clubs, probably the cloth won't be as reactive as the ones you see on TV, so you'd have to probably go lower in the cue ball. On professional tables, if you do that, the cue ball, because you play a lot of, you know, low in the cue ball, it tends to go forward before it reacts. So going really low doesn't really work. And obviously, as well, going low, you can screw off the pack, the cue ball can come back down here and up here and not on the red. So what you'll see a lot of pros doing, the top pros, they're the best break builders in the game, i.e. Ronnie, uh, Neil Robertson, John Higgins, Judd Trump, etc. They'll kind of stun into the pack and they'll kind of pick a red. They won't go blindly into the reds. They'll, they'll pick a red for contact. And it's something that obviously when I'm commentating, I'll say, well, he's going to, he's going to hit this certain red. Going into the black, into this corner pocket means going into the left side of the bunch, as I look up the table, is the way to go. And with stun, not screw. So the reason you play stun is the cue ball doesn't come back this way. It goes that way. And with a little bit of right hand side, the cue ball will go off the table. If it hit, goes to the cushion, it will go up, up the table. And that leaves you more chance of being in a red. So it's about picking the red that you want to contact. As I say, I'm not screwing, I'm stunning. Now I actually hit that pretty well. I've not got a red into the corner, but I have got a red into the right middle, but you'll see by by stunning the cue ball, you've kept a cue ball in the middle of the table rather than letting it go 
down to the black cushions because, I mean, as you can see, the cue ball ends up down here. You've got no pot whatsoever. So sometimes you don't finish on the perfect angle uh, on the black to be able to go into the reds. I mean, this would be perfect. You know, kind of level with the black normally is, is, is the perfect angle, but sometimes you're a bit low. So the shot I would favor here is kind of like, it's, it's a, a shot you don't see often. I don't, I don't know why, because I think it's a really good shot to play. The only reason I can think of is the pros like to have control of the situation. So by stunning the cue ball into these reds, you kind of, you kind of, you feel that you've got control of the cue ball. But I like the topspin shot. I like going into the, the, the pack from topspin here because when the cue ball, after, after you pot the black, it's going into the pack and it's going to have that topspin momentum. It's going to carry the cue ball through the reds. Okay, there's maybe slightly more luck involved in the positional side of it, but I like the shot. Let's see if we can pull it off. There you see, so we've potted the black. Oh, we'd be, oh, I thought the red was going to go in the middle pocket. So the reason the pros might not play that shot is because that cue ball has landed tight in the cushion. They feel they have more control by stunning it, keeping this area. So I've been a little bit unlucky. I mean, look at the split of the reds, it's beautiful. But with that top spin momentum, the cue ball is carried to the cushion. But listen, I've got this red here. I think I can go in and win the frame at this visit. Okay, another way of going into the reds from the black is from a high black. Um, a shot that I used to quite like. Um, the downside to this shot is because the cue ball's got to come off a cushion and go into the reds, it's not going to have a, as much speed um, as if you were, say, here and stunning directly into them. So quite often you'll see this shot played and, and the cue ball will stick on the reds because it just hasn't got that momentum to go through them. Um, in a club table situation, I would say play this with topspin. Uh, you know, high up the cue ball because the cloth it won't be like a, a cloth you see on TV. There won't be as much um, reaction to it. But on TV, the players will play a little bit lower down in the cue ball because topspin will cause the cue ball to sort of arc actually round the reds and actually miss them and end up down in the bulk end. So it's a little bit lower down in the cue ball. With that touch of right hand side, And as you see, it's, I have got a red into the middle pocket, but as you can see, because the cue ball hasn't got that real speed, it can stick in amongst the reds. So you have to be sometimes relying a little bit of luck um, to be on a red, but I am on one. I can pot this, screw back for the black, clear up and win the frame. Another way of opening the reds is obviously, well, it was, it was one of my signature shots, actually. I, I, I would love to say I actually invented it. I didn't, but um, yeah. I'll say that it did. Um, so basically, it's, it's, it's a shot that it, it looks spectacular when it, when it comes off, basically potting the blue. The idea is to try and get the pink full in the face and split the reds everywhere. But the main thing is by catching the pink full in the face, you keep the cue ball in the middle of the table. If you, say, catch the pink either side, you'll lose the cue ball. The cue ball will either go, could go in off in that pocket, actually, or that corner pocket. But the cue ball goes to one of the sides and you don't really open the reds and, it, and it's normally end of break. So the important thing is to try and get that cue ball full in the face. The way I like to do it, I kind of like to, I know I, I, I always advocate um, keeping the, the cue parallel to the table and, and obviously being low, but I kind of like to sort of just slightly aim down because I feel like it get, I can get that sort of arc on the cue ball that I need to hit that cue ball full in the face and keep it in the middle of the table. Obviously it's a power shot so I'm slightly aiming down, trying to get that pink full in the face. So I caught the pink full in the face, as you see. The most important thing, keep that cue ball in that middle of the table. We've got a red, which is basically all you want. Whenever you're splitting the pack of reds, as long as you've got one pot, you're kind of happy. Obviously, we'd like the reds to split nicer than that, but we've got a red. Um, we've got a chance to keep on with the frame and uh, yeah, played it pretty well. Okay, what can go wrong with a split? Um, and you'll see it quite often when the players don't catch the pink full in the face. The idea is to get the cue ball going down in a pretty much a straight line. So you catch the pink there. Cue ball's got nowhere to go, so it kind of stays in this area, and that's the perfect way to play it. But if you catch the pink either side, that's when the cue ball has just got a life of its own. You don't know where it's going to end up, and luck comes into it. And to be honest, when I'm in comment, you don't actually deserve to be in the red if you play it wrong. So the idea is to get it full in the face, but I'll try and show you what happens. If you don't, there you see, I caught the pink on the left hand side. Now I've been very, very lucky um, because if that red doesn't go here, 
I'm, I'm on nothing. So it just shows you it's so important to catch that pink in the right way or else you really don't deserve to be on a red. Okay, you've played for the blue um, to have an angle to go into the pack, but we've landed a little bit short. The optimum angle to go into them directly is probably about here, but we've landed here. So we haven't got the angle. You can't get enough momentum from this angle to go directly into the, the pink and split the reds unless you're Judd Trump. But another way of playing it is to play with topspin of two cushions, of this cushion, this cushion, and come into the pack from the back. So let's try and let's set out the angle to say this is where you've ended up too straight to play the direct shot. So a lot of cue power, topspin, touch your running side, which is left hand side. <laughs> uh, there's a good cutaway. There's a good. There's a good blooper. So there, we come off two cushions because we couldn't go directly. So you get that momentum with the run inside, and well, you're always going to be happy with that result. I'm going to go and win the frame from there. So quite often, um, you've played a positional shot to get on the blue to open the reds, but you've gone too far. So now we need to open the reds from a bulk colour if, if we want to win the frame at this visit. Now, the same shot, obviously, if you're yellow or green. The yellow, it's a stun off the cushion here, just below, or just above, I should say, the middle pocket, just here with some left-hand side, which is running side, to hopefully bring the cue ball into the reds. If you were the same angle in the green, it would be running side, it would be right-hand side. This time it's left. So I'm aiming just below the middle of the cue ball, with that left hand side. Okay, so it's a, quite a good result. It's never guaranteed because the cue ball's got to travel such a long distance to get into the reds, but we've managed to leave ourselves on one red to the middle. So we've left ourselves the opportunity to go on and win the frame at this visit.